everybody, this is Diana from So Very Crafty, and I have a unique little project today that's been on my blog for quite a long time, and I thought I'd make it for you because I had these extra um, flower sack dishcloths. Um, I ordered a bunch of them from Amazon and uh, for another project that I did for the blog, and I decided to make a handbag out of some dishcloths and they came out really cute and I thought I'd share this project with you. Unfortunately, the handles for the prototype handbag are not available anymore, but um, I had these red hand handles uh, in my stockpile of handbag handles. So I thought to make uh, a red and white uh, dishcloth handbag today for you, um, similar to the prototype that you see in the photograph. So I hope you enjoyed this project today. It's a fun one. It's a nice little handbag. It's got a recessed zipper that is a zipper that is separating so it completely comes apart for a fully open handbag and zips back up just as easily. And our zipper is inset, so we don't even see it. This is a really cute little handbag, very easy to make, and I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to do that today. I hope you enjoy it, and if you do, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, ding that bell for notifications, and head over to the website at www.soverycrafty.com for more sewing and crafting tutorials that you won't find here on the website. Although you will find this one on, on the blog um, that will give you a step-by-step -step, uh, pictorial tutorial, if you will, on how to make this project. So let's get started on how to make a very cute recessed zipper dishcloth handbag. Okay, so how do we make this terrific little handbag? It's actually not that difficult. The first thing that you're going to need is some of these flower sack dishcloths. Now I got mine on Amazon and I'll put a link in the description section of the video on where you can get these. Or you can just use fabric for your handbag if you like. But I thought this was a really cute idea. So I uh, used these dishcloths that I had on hand uh, that I used for another project and made a handbag out of them. And what you're going to do is you're going to cut up your dishcloth into several pieces. Your main body of your handbag is going to be about 15 and a half inches wide because that's how wide our uh, dishcloth is by 12 inches long. And you're going to cut two pieces of that. You're going to cut two facing pieces that measure the same 15 and a half inches wide by three and a half inches long for our facing. And now for our zipper panels, we are going to cut four pieces that measure the 15 that measure 14 inches wide by just two inches long. Now all of these measurements will be in the description section of the video, so you don't have to worry about them now. You can just scroll down to where it says see more to get all of the measurements for this particular uh, project. You are also going to need some lining fabric, and I chose this uh, red dot fabric that I had on hand. And you are going to cut this lining fabric 15 and a half inches wide by nine and a half inches long. The other thing you're going to need is a 12 inch long 
separating zipper. In other words, this is a zipper that comes apart into two pieces. And I like to use separating zippers for um, handbags that have inset zippers so that they can open wide and we don't have to worry about uh, stuffing our stuff inside of the bag. And finally, you're going to need some handles. I happen to have these red handles on, on uh, hand today, so I'm going to use those. But you can make your own handbag handles or just buy some from Amazon like I did. Um, and I had purchased these many years ago and they just happened to go with this project. So now that we have cut out all of our fabrics, the next thing that we do is we have some interfacing. And I have chosen some Pellon 808 or 809 interfacing. They're both the same. The only difference between 808 and 809 is 809 is doubled up and 808 is not. And I have already fused my interfacing onto my main uh, bag pieces and onto one each of my zipper pieces. So two zipper pieces and our main body bag pieces have interfacing on them. Now that we have our project interfaced, we're going to start out by installing our zipper. And believe me, with the separating zipper, it is a lot easier of a process. We are going to take one of our interfaced pieces and we're going to place it right sides up on our workstation. We are going to take one of our, one half of our separating zipper and we are going to place it right sides down. And we know it's right sides down because the zipper pull is underneath. And we're going to make sure that it's in the center of our project. Now you can find the center or you can just eyeball it like I'm doing. Then you're going to take one of your non-interfaced uh, zipper facing pieces and you're going to place it right on top. Now you can pin this or you can clip it. I'm just going to use some clips here and I'm going to try and line up these lines for uh, the flower sack pattern so that we have this looking nice and neat. And it should line up because they're the same size. Once we have done this, we're going to repeat this process for the other half of our zipper so that we have two zipper plackets for our zipper. And again, we want to make sure that our zipper is right sides down. Now I'm just going to head over to the sewing machine and we are just going to stitch down this zipper onto these zipper plackets. So let's head over to the sewing machine and let's take care of that. So here we are back at the sewing machine and we are going to place our zipper placket here and we are just going to stitch all the way from the end down our zipper and we're going to do this for both of our zipper plackets.
Now we've stitched our placket and we are just going to turn these plackets right sides out so that our zipper is facing up. And that's all there is to stitching our zipper to our zipper placket. Now we're going to take our lining fabric and place it right sides up on our work surface. We are going to take our zipper placket and place it right sides down on our lining. Now for this we really do want to make sure that it's in the center. So I'm going to fold my zipper placket in half and I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just going to clip a small clip here so that I know where my center is. And there's just a little triangle there. And I'm going to do the same thing for my lining. This will be in the seam allowance so you don't have to worry about it. Now I'm going to place this right sides down so that these triangles meet. Once I've placed this right sides down, I'm going to take one of my facing pieces and I'm going to place it right sides down on top of my zipper. I'm going to clip these together. Now you can use pins if you like. Make sure that you clip or pin all of the layers. We want to line up these stripes if we can. There we go, we have our stripes lined up. And we're going to repeat this process for the other side of our zipper. Now I'm just going to head over to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch right across this uh, facing through all of the layers. 
and I'm going to do that on both of these pieces. Okay, so now we have our facing and our zipper attached to our lining. Now it's time to just create our outer bag. All we have to do is place our outer bag pieces right sides together and we are going to stitch along the sides and the bottom using a one quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm just gonna head over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna take care of that and we're gonna come back and move on to our next step. And that's all there is to that. And I should say that I used a half inch seam allowance on this rather than a quarter inch seam. And now we are going to box our corners. And the way we're going to do that is we're just going to smush down our bottom seam with our side seam and create a triangle just like that. Now we can look inside here and make sure that our seams are lined up. And I'm just going to place a clip here. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. We're just going to smoosh this down so that our bottom seam and our side seam meet up. And it's best if you can open up these seams because it'll be easier to stitch when you are doing that. And just, you know, take a peek inside to make sure that your seams are lined up. Otherwise, it won't look as nice. Now you're going to head over to the sewing machine and you are going to stitch right across here using a half inch seam allowance. This is just a little small box on our corners today, but we're just gonna stitch right across here. So let me go over to the sewing machine and take care of that, and we'll be right back. Here we are back at the sewing machine, and I have my corners here that I turned into triangles. And I am just going to stitch right across here just like this. I'm going to back stitch since this will get some wear and tear. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And that's all there is to boxing our corners. Now that we've boxed our corners here, I'm just going to trim off the excess up to the seam allowance without going through the seam allowance. That way we get rid of some of this bulk. And I'm going to turn this bag right sides out. And you can see we have nice boxes on our bottom. Just what we were looking for. 
and our bag stands up pretty much on its own. Now it's time for us to complete our lining. We're going to take our lining pieces and we're going to place them right sides together. And we're going to stitch them exactly the same way that we stitched our outer bag. We're going to use a half inch seam allowance and we're going to come down here to the bottom, but we're going to leave an opening here at the bottom so that we can turn our bag right sides out when it's time. So let's go over to the sewing machine and stitch a half inch seam down the sides and part way to the bottom, leaving an opening so that we can turn our bag. Okay, so I have stitched my lining exactly the same way that I stitched my bag. And you will see that I've stitched all the way up the facing of the bag and the lining. And now I'm just going to box my corners exactly the same way that I boxed the other corners. I'm just going to smush my bottom seam and my side seam, clip, and stitch. And I'm going to peek in here through my opening that I left in the lining to make sure that my seams are aligned because this is kind of blind. Unlike when you uh, cut out some holes, this is a little blind. We're just going to clip that, do the same on the other side, and I'll be back. Okay, now we have boxed our corners. I'm going to clip off the excess. And now it's time to put this bag together. I'm going to take my outer bag and I'm going to place it in my lining bag. And of course my zipper is open so that we can slide this inside. I'm going to match up my side seams. And I'm going to nest these seams. In other words, I'm going to have one seam going one way and one seam going other way, the other way because they're quite bulky because of the dishcloth. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. And then I'm just going to clip around the top. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to stitch all the way around the top. I'm going to use a half inch seam allowance because I've left the hem on this um, dishcloth and that's a half inch seam allowance. So I'm just going to whip around the top here and I'm going to come back and we're going to finish up this project. Okay, so now we're back and I have finished stitching all the way around the top of my bag. Now it's time to turn the bag right sides out. And we are just going to reach into our lining and pull this bag through the lining right sides out.
There's our lining. There's our outer bag. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to stitch up our opening in our lining. I'm not going to do that right now. We're just going to move on to our next step. I'm just going to put a couple of pins in here so that we can move on. I would recommend that you use a ladder stitch for this or you could use your machine if you wanted to. So we are going to stuff our lining inside of our bag and we are going to take the facing part of our bag and stuff it inside as well. And I'm going to take some clips here and I'm going to clip the facing all the way around. And it gets a little bulky on the seams here. You could uh, trim these seams if you want to, um, but in the ex but I didn't do that here. And we just want to make sure that our seam is at the top of our bag. The next thing we're going to do to create our inset zipper is we are going to go back over to the sewing machine and we are just going to stitch again around the top of our bag using about a one quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm going to head over there and just stitch around the top of my bag using a one quarter inch seam allowance and we'll come back and we'll finish up our project. Now we have top stitched our bag and it's time to add our bag handles. Now I have used, uh, I'm using pre-made bag handles here and they just have uh, little holes right along the bottom here for stitching. So I'm just going to take a few minutes and stitch these on by hand and then we'll be finished with this project. Okay, so we have now finished our dishcloth handbag by sewing on our handles and I stitched up our lining. We have our inset zipper where all we have to do is zip it up and we are complete. That's all there is to this little dishcloth handbag project. Super simple, very cute, and one of a kind. I hope you enjoyed this project today. I sure enjoyed making it for you. Um, I'm sorry the handles on the prototype are not available anymore but you can find all kinds of different handles for your dishcloth handbag uh, on the internet. So just keep searching for the ones that are perfect for your bag. Uh, if you enjoyed this project today, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and ding that bell for notifications so that you get future So Very Crafty videos in your inbox. And if you want more sewing and crafting tutorials, head over to the website at www.soverycrafty.com for loads and loads of more sewing and crafting tutorials that you won't find here on the YouTube channel. So that's it for today. I hope I'll see you guys next time for the next project here at So Very Crafty. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.